Mike Schmitz of ESPN. We're here with Precious Achua of Memphis. Uh, Precious, this is our second virtual film session here, so I appreciate you taking the time to kind of talk about your game. And, you know, obviously it's been a, a different pre-draft process that we really haven't seen before. Um, just curious kind of what, what you've been up to and, and how you've been making the best of it. Oh, I mean, it's a very um, interesting situation going on. I don't think anything has ever happened like this before. But for me, I've just been, you know, running and just looking for ways to stay in shape, you know, keep my body, you know, the way it's supposed to be and just not letting myself go. You know, that's where I'm at with this whole situation right now. You know, we've seen you in the past, uh, you know, with Montverde or at Hoop Summit or even Pangos, maybe one of the first times um, I saw you in. You know, then you were kind of playing as more of a 3-4, and um, I'm sure, you know, that was kind of your, your natural position. And and the game has changed, right? Like, n- nowadays yes. it's like, you know, Bam is playing the 5, Zion is playing some 5, Montrez is, is playing the 5, and 5, whatever you want to call it, modern, big, runner, yeah. whatever you want to say. It seems like you fully embraced that mm-hmm. as the season went mm-hmm. along, and that's when it almost clicked for me is like, if that's what you are, if you're like this Tasmanian devil, guard everybody, run around, and then like slowly keep adding to the skill stuff and be like a total mismatch on offense with your ability to attack and handle and all that, then it's like, okay, you're a different player. How do you view yourself um, in terms of kind of the next level? Coming to Memphis, actually, I came with a mindset of how I wanted to play. And then I spoke to the coaching staff with Kenny Coach Mike. And they kind of, like, helped me understand the game and understand where the game is moving to us. Mm-hmm. And they told me it was going to be a position with basketball. Or that's mm-hmm. what it is right now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had a lot of you know, meetings with both of them. You know, we sat down. We spoke a lot. You know, that's the type of relationship I have with both of my coaches. We sit down and we talk a lot, you know. And they told me with the type of body that I have, the type of skills that I have, I could be a mismatch nightmare for a lot of teams and a lot of people. And, you know, with a lot of film, like I said, that's when I started understanding what they were saying. And I noticed I could go in multiple positions. It don't matter. I could switch on anyone on the floor. And on the other end, if someone else switches on me, then it's a mismatch because if it's a bigger guy, I could take them off the balance of a small guy, I just go inside, you know. It made the game it made the game so much, so much more easier and so much more simple. So kind of diving into it here, this is my favorite play from you of the season defensively. Maybe you've seen this um, this sequence because it shows your defensive versatility, your motor when you're locked in, all that stuff. So um, if you can, just walk me through kind of what you're seeing here and what you were doing on the court. I think I remember this exact play. I switched this and I switched again, yep. I believe. Yeah, it was a cross screen. Yep. Right there, I switched. And then what do you see? What's the next action here? And, and I think... So what happened was it was a cross screen on the basket. Yeah. They they were hoping I followed the big guy. Yeah. It was a decoy. That was like that was just that wasn't even part of the play at yep. that point. Um, I understood it was a decoy from this side, so they could get a shooter on that side wide open, you know, for a step up screen. Yeah. And so I switched that. You know, that kind of like broke the whole play down because yep. you know, like I said, you, you see a lot of plays that you see the same thing over and over, and over again. So what happened was I switched the first time I switched the, the cross screen and I switched the, um, the step up screen on the side yep. to guard the shooter. And I think he tried to take me up the dribble. Yep. Yes, right there. And, and then, then I blocked it. And a great contest. And then you give it up to get it back and then mm-hmm. fouled. I mean, just so guarding like three different positions on one play, being active, communicating, um, that's a coach's dream right there. And, and I think that speaks to kind of the defensive versatility that we saw from you this season. So um, just want to start off with that. Like that's, I think that's the prototype for you. And um, how many positions do you feel you can guard? I'd like to guard all five positions, to be honest. And what's the key to that? The key to that is just knowing your opponent, you know, knowing what they could do, just watching a lot of film on them Mm -hmm. and knowing, okay, because this might, let me say for example, this is we play a lot of big guys that will only shoot the ball with their right hand. Mm -hmm. You know, we play, I, I played a whole bunch of them. In most cases, I had to guard them. Mm-hmm. And what I did in um, a lot of film sessions was I watched mm-hmm. a lot of film, a lot of tape on them, and so if they ever shot the ball with their left hand or if they ever did something different. In most cases, a lot of dudes did the same thing over and over as long as it worked. Right. So when I when we play them in the game, well, my whole goal 
when our guarded players like that, especially big ones, take that strong arm away, mm-hmm. force them to shoot the ball with the with their offhand, mm-hmm. and that's a much tougher shot for them to make. If they make it, then you know you're gonna live. You're, you're gonna have to live with that. But right. it's just more about filming, knowing what your you know the the offensive player could do and can't do. That's just that's just all it comes down to. Uh, like we talked about before, you were kind of more on the wing uh, growing up, more on the wing as you know a prep player. What was it like to kind of um, you know, shift over to playing more like rim runs, playing a little bit out of out of uh, as a dive man and pick and roll. Uh, what was that change like? Oh, um, my first it was a it took a it took a while for me to get used to it. In terms of like rim runs, I already I'm the type of player I love playing fast pace. You yep. know, since high school, I just like to get the ball in and then just run the whole time. So the whole rim run wasn't a problem to me. I mean, I felt like I got used to that pretty early, you know, I kind of, like, took that in, but the whole, like, the diving part of it, especially angles and screens and yeah. body control and, you know, reading the roll, the the, the the help side defense after yeah. you roll and making the right play, you know, don't have to, like, adjust your body meet there to finish, it was just something I had to learn, yeah. and it took a lot of reps and a lot, a lot of um, film sessions for me to actually get that part of the game and just being able to figure out the right play to make it every time. I think like as a rim runner, okay, maybe it's maybe your 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 former teammate James Wiseman, maybe Obi Toppin, like you guys are all the best rim runners in the draft, I would say, just with your ability to change ends. Like just watch you run here. I think you get the foul eventually, but um just dead sprint, like that type of energy and then kind of the the Euro step around to draw the foul. Mm-hmm. Uh and then fifty fifty balls, you give it up, get it back. And then chin up on the rim like you're light on your feet. You're going to be a point guard's dream uh, with your ability to run the floor like that. And then I'd say one of the next steps um, is just decision-making off that. I know this is a tough mm-hmm. situation here. Like he's loading up to take the charge. Um, but maybe like having a feel for where he's at on the floor and then maybe it's a one more pass there to the big or to Lester in the corner. And then you can see, mm-hmm. though, the progression here. Like you made that adjustment. Perfect read. Um, and I think over almost half of your assists – came in the open court. So um, mm-hmm. it, it seems like you're comfortable, more comfortable playmaking in the open court uh, than the half court. But one of your biggest advantages for me is the fact that, like, okay, you can play almost the five on defense and then you can handle and go in the open court. Um, how comfortable do you feel in those kind of grab-and-go type of situations? Um, I, I feel very comfortable with this type of situation because, like, I, like you said, I, this is my first time actually playing the five position. Whereas, like, we're stepping on the floor and I'm the five guy, you know, to say, even if that's not, like, a thing anymore right. based on how basketball is going. But I've always been been a type of player where I could get the ball in the open court and just push it, you know, make plays for myself, make plays for other people. And it wasn't really a problem because, you know, speaking of Coach Penny, actually, when, we you know, playing, when we first got on campus and stuff, like I said, playing, he told me, because I actually went up to him, I'm like, because you want me to get the ball? Because that's what I did all summer, you know, when we played in practice and stuff like that. I got the ball and I just pushed it. And every time, it was like I beat two or three people by just pushing the ball. And I think we played a couple games and he, and I didn't do that. You know, I got the ball and I passed it to the point guard or something or whatever. And he came, he called me to his office one day. He said, why are you not pushing the ball? And I told him, I said, you know, I'm, I'm playing the five. Yeah. I don't think that's what I, I should be doing. And he told me, he said, you're not helping the team if you're doing it. Yeah. And he told me I was holding back if I decided not to push the ball in fast break after getting the rebound. And he said, because I beat two players at least every time that I pushed the ball, that I could give it up and get it back or, like, create for someone else. And, you know, after we had that meeting, it's just everything changed, you know. I get the ball, if I'm wide open, I push it. If I don't, if, if obviously the defense is set, and I give it to the point guard or someone to, you know, set the, uh, yeah. the our offense up and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, there aren't a lot of guys in the NBA that can rim run like that and can also push and create like that. So again, it's it's been cool to kind of see your your progression over these last few years and, and how you've evolved and kind of accepted every challenge you know thrown your way. And I think, like we touched on, you're really kind of. Uh, the perfect modern basketball player and kind of what, what teams are looking for. So, um, you know, I think if you keep kind of honing in on some of those areas you have to improve and then um, really locking in on those strengths too, then 
you know, you, you got a bright future, man. So I, I appreciate your time and, and um, you know, keep working hard and, and stay busy. I know we're all in uh, strange times right now, so <laughs> I know. Uh, but it'll end soon. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks so much. All right. All right. No problem. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.